Good morning, Flats Class YouTube. Today, we're gonna talk about what I love and what I hate about inline hooks. Inline hooks are hard to love, but there are certain scenarios where you gotta use them. So, let's go inside the shop, talk about it a little bit, but while I'm setting up, why don't you go jump on board my boat and catch some of this action, and I'll be right back. Did you see that? <laughs> Did you see that, babe? I mean, that was incredible. I mean, sight fished him. Uh, I don't think so. This is single hooks. I put the single hooks on to avoid the grass. That's a great one, too. Good Lord. He was just... He was... Oh, don't go that way. Don't go that way. Oh, man. Come on, bud. Just bragging about this. This fish is strong too. I caught him so close to the boat. I'm gonna try to put the power pole down though. I, I see it. Good. <laughs> I was like, look at that fish. He's just swimming there. And I literally dropped that uh, bleach blonde Miradine. This is the 27, the XL. I dropped it a foot and a half off to one side of him and just started reeling. I didn't even twitch it, I just reeled it. And he absolutely smoked it. I was just bragging on this, I was just bragging on this rod too, um, how accurate it is. It's such a crisp blank. Trevor over there has been hooking me up with some good product to try some bass actions that work great for artificials inshore so if you're a inshore angler don't sleep on the Fitzgerald brand because they've got some good this fish is going to be oversized it's probably going to be about 28 wow all right we're going to bring him in for a landing stand by Look at the size of that fish. Babe, that's at least 28 or 29. <laughs> it, at least. Wow. Yeah. Well, let me. All right, let me get my pliers in there. So these, I had a lot of grass. These are the BKK, and I'll put them in the description. The BKK. BKK inline hooks, the sharpest, the lightest. They don't mess up the, the weight of the plug like a lot of others do. And what a, what a fish here. I mean, that is a solid fish. Wow. All right, let's get them back in because we're all about releasing everything over 20, putting them back. Nice. Off he goes. Okay, so we're fishing a giant flat with a south wind of about 15 miles an hour. That is strong, but the best part about fishing on these windy days is the fact that you're probably not gonna share the flat with anybody else. We've seen one airboat out here doing a tour and we haven't seen anybody else. And we're covering a lot of water. It's just difficult to stay in contact with your presentation. And then, you know, you're, you're, you're moving so quick and there's so much grass floating on the water. I moved from my treble hook plug, which is a Paul Brown, which is generally the plug I rely on out in this spot, um, to this custom Miradine color of mine. This is the 27MR Bleach Blonde right here and I changed the hooks out to single inlines. I typically don't like to use single inlines, believe it or not, be 
because it requires a different type of hook set but these hooks are the sharpest you can buy these are those bkk hooks and between that and the fact that i've got a very crisp rod in this fitzgerald um, i'm able to make the right cast quickly and that that bait just landed a foot and a half off to one side i engaged the reel and pulled it and it just swam up and he turned all the way around to eat that it was it was fun to see let's see if we can duplicate that okay so this morning i'm making some notes for some new stuff that i'm coming up with some module class module stuff i'm doing at class class university uh, but this past weekend i took advantage of some warmer weather we had a trend and I, I fished a zone that I haven't been fishing in a while because we had four days of nice warm weather. And when that happens, I want to be the first one ahead of the rest of the group that goes out and starts talking about where they're catching these big trout. Because to me, when you start approaching the bigger moons at the end of February, going into March, and then finally into April, the opportunity to catch these big trout looms large in shallow water because the spawn is getting ready to kick off and and those big females will move up shallow especially on some grassy zones that might have a little bit of table rock but there's still some deeper water nearby so i take my wife out there to explain the scenario that you just watched and there's nothing there's nothing the wind's blowing hard but it is blowing out of the south which is usually a good thing and we're covering water and it's it's difficult as you saw me explain uh to kit you know to keep up with your presentation and we were both fouling quite a bit so then i had a t-rig a bait for a soft plastic for her um, and i had changed the trebles on my plug i went from a paul brown and took the trebles then off this and put an inline hook system on my, this is my 27 MR, this is the bleach blonde, or if you're a Texas guy, it's called the gringo. And, and I started working the inline hooks. Now I'm gonna tell you that I am not a fan of inline hooks, uh, and here's why. Yes, they are good, better for the fish. And yes, um, they're least likely to get tangled up in a net and, you know, you're probably at less risk and they definitely catch less grass. But here's what I've noticed over time. If you're not fishing the proper action rod with these, or you overweight the plug because you didn't take the time to weigh these inline hooks, the bait doesn't perform the way it should. And more importantly, you miss fish. And the reason I know this is I've been a professional guide for decades and I watch my guys miss fish. Now, most of them are missing fish because they're using spinning gear with this setup. And that's because most of the spinning rods are super parabolic. They bend a lot. Well, it takes a significant amount of power to drive a heavier wire hook into a fish than it would as if you were going to have a thin wire treble hook. So how do you beat that? Well, in my case, I'm always throwing a casting rod and I'm throwing a casting rod that is a little crisper. I, get, I don't want to get tangled up here, but I'm throwing a casting rod that's got 30 pound braid. I've got generally 15 pound leader with a short piece of bike tippet that might be 20 might be sometimes I just go straight 15 for four or five feet and fish this. But this rod is a heavier action, you know, I'm gonna say three eighths to one ounce rod. So it's got some backbone. It's a medium heavy seven foot three all purpose rod. But for you to have the same type of action with a spinning rod, you can't you can't throw this on your typical seven foot or seven and a half foot medium spinning rod with a 2,500 or 3,000 with these hooks and expect not to lose half the fish that strike it. You, you've, you've done it before. I've watched it. You hook one. Oh, I missed that one. Oh, I got another one. He's running around. He came off. And then you catch one. And then you think that, oh, well, it could have been a smaller fish. It could have been this, but that's not it. 
It's hard to hook fish with these unless you have a crisper action spinning rod. So when I throw these, I typically throw these in lines on spinning gear on a rod such as this. And I'm gonna try not to make a mess here. So this is a medium heavy 7.6 fast. And when I say fast, it is a stiffer, it only bends right here in this tip. It doesn't bend way down in the blank. It's not bending way down here. See how tight it is here? It's only bending right in here. This little bit, this 15% of the tip of the rod. If you'll use a rod that has a crisper action, such as, such as that one from Fitzgerald, it will mitigate a lot of those missed fish and you'll get good hook penetration and you'll be able to control the fish. If not, you need to be learning how to throw those casting rods because that's my biggest beef over all these years watching clients, you know, bring their tackle boxes on my boat and throwing single inlines is the fact that we miss too many fish. We just simply miss too many fish. Now, I'm a proponent of them. If you're using the right stuff, I do not get paid by this company. I just found that these inline hooks work really good for me. Okay, I showed them to you in the intro. They're from BKK. Um, they're hand ground. Uh, they're, they have a, a killer um, coating on them that makes them a little bit more saltwater resistant. That's why I bought them. But this is how much they cost. It's 12 bucks for these inlines, which is like double what you pay for others. Now, if you're in, in our Flat Scotts University, you would get a break on these hooks by ordering them through sodiumusa.com. But the fact is, is they're not cheap. And you can see, some of you gotta ask me, these are size one. I use size one a lot. Um, you can use one aughts as well, but I like size one. I feel like the weight of it's perfect. In fact, the weight of it allows this thing to sink even slower than it does with the troubles that come from mirror lure. Which for me, as you saw in that video, we we're fishing one and a half feet of water over crystal clear water and grass. But that redfish just came up and just smoked this bait. And I was easily able to get, you know, a, a, a hook in them. And it's because I'm using these, these crisper action rods that only bend in the tip. The rest of the rod is a stick. And lots of times you have seen me where I love to throw the 27s and the 28s in the hard bait lineup from Mirror I do that, honestly, because it eliminates catching fish like ladyfish or too small a trout. Um, and I've got the chance to catch a redfish, like in this video. Or, if we get even more warm days, I'll start catching snook on them. So, that's, that's where I'm coming from. Those are the pros and the cons of inline hooks. Now, I don't want to turn any of you off. I know I'm going to take a beating in the comments down below because so many of you have been taught to throw inline hooks. But I'm gonna tell you, if you've been suffering from premature hook elation <laughs> or, or premature releases, a lot of it has to do with you're not using the right rod to throw these types of baits with these types of hooks. So start considering upping the weight and action of your rod to heavier and crisper rods. I know they're heavier and they're not fun to throw, but I'm gonna tell you, you're not gonna lose any fish. If you like what you're seeing right here at Flats Glass YouTube, please give us the thumbs up and hit the subscribe and notification bells. Um, I would love to have you here with me every day in my virtual classroom. And if you really wanna take a deeper dive into inshore fishing and know what the pros know, taught by pros, then go to flatsclassuniversity.com and check us out there. All right, that's all I got for you today. I'm on my way to the Miami Boat Show.